So this is a short introduction video on Citrix Gateway HDX proxy mode. This video is brought to you by Nords Citrix Networking and I'm Johannes Nords. I'm a Citrix certified expert on Netscaler and a trainer. There is more on my blog. So this is our environment. We got a client somewhere on the internet. I did an IP address of 87.15.92.13 for this client. We got a DMZ network with a Netscaler in it. There is an outside firewall, it's a NAT firewall, netting 82.17.32.15, port 443 to 192.168.0.120, port 443. This IP address is a virtual IP address of the Netscaler gateway. This Netscaler of course got a Netscaler IP address 192.168.0.100 and the subnet IP address 192.168.0.110 The inside firewall is just routing We got storefront server inside then 001 We got a controller then 002 This controller is connected to a SQL database of course, the controller got an XML service on it. XML service is very important for two reasons. First of all, it's used to connect storefront to the controller. Second, uh, it contains the SDA. And last not least, we got a resource. I have painted a computer, but this may be a server operating system. The IP address is 10.10.01. So now my user is connecting to the Netscaler gateway, this is netted via the firewall and the user is sending credentials to the Netscaler gateway. Next number two, the Netscaler will send credentials from Netscaler IP address to LDAP and radius. So the user gets authenticated. This is number two. Next, from subnet IP address to storefront, we will send credentials. This will be number three. Next is an optional one. Storefront will do a callback to Netscaler Gateway. The callback is done on port 443 and it's used to get all the endpoint analysis scan results from Netscaler Gateway. There are some more reasons for this, but I won't go into this. Now, the user will be authenticated to Active Directory again. This is number five. After successful authentication, we will pass the credentials to controller. The controller will load all the applications from database the user specific applications this is number seven these credentials are passed to storefront storefront will create an HTML page for the user and forward this so this is number eight forward this via Netscaler gateway to the user. And the user will now see the applications. So phase one is finished. Ready for phase two. The user will click one of the applications. I call this application Outlook. And this is forwarded to the Netscaler gateway. So I call this number 10, Outlook. This is forwarded, proxied to storefront. 
and storefront will forward to the XML service. Now the controller has to do load balancing, has to find the least loaded resource. Do the load balancing. It's number 11, and this is our resource. So the 10, 10, 01. We send the credentials there. We will store the credentials within the resource get a ticket, so-called Enfuse ticket. It's a very old name. And return IP address and ticket to the controller. So this is number 13. This is sent back to storefront. Number 14 address and ticket number and storefront now has to create the ICA file. This is number 15. Now this is what's inside the ICA file. So number 15 ICA file. There has to be the FQDN, the fully qualified domain name of the gateway. Next, so this will be gateway.abc.com, for example. There will also be the name of the application in it and some more. Like screen resolution and so on, I didn't go into this. So now we run into a problem. We must not send the IP address to the user because this would expose internal secrets to the outside, therefore we have to store it inside of our environment. And this is what the SDA is good for. So we store the IP address into the SDA, number 16. So there's a table in it, IP address to a random number. And we have to send the random number the so-called SDA ticket back to the storefront server. And this SDA ticket will finally go into the ICA file together with the SDA ID. We will send this ICA file to the client. This is number 18. Still number 18. And phase two is finished. So in phase number three, the Citrix receiver, the workspace app will read the ICA file. So this is the workspace app PC. It will find out the name of the gateway. And will connect to the gateway via port 443. We'll send the SDA ticket there. So this is number 20, send the SDA ticket. The subnet IP address will now connect to the SDA, which usually is inside of the XML service. Send the SDA ticket, 21. The SDA will look up the ticket, the IP address, and will return the IP address to the gateway. And we can now create an HDX connection to the resource. So this is 23, the HDX connection. This will be TCP or UDP based and the user will see Outlook. So that's it. We are finished. So time to define firewall rules. There are the connections from outside to inside. 
this is from any IP address so from internet to the TMZ network this is from any IP address to the virtual IP address of the gateway server TCP or UDP so this is important to not forget UDP 443 we might use port 80 for redirection this is convenient for the users so HTTP to HTTPS redirection that's it next from TMZ network to LAN there are these connections they are port number 443 TCP so this is subnet IP address to storefront TCP port 443 you could use port 80 but that's not good style as there are credentials in it next one is the HDX connection this is subnet IP address to ICA resources all the IC resources 2598 for session reliability both TCP and UDP if you don't use session reliability it would be 4094 next connection is the SDA connection so I did wrong this is subnet IP address to SDA so XML service basically the controllers is based in the controllers so don't forget about this should be 443 could also be port 80 I forgot about the authentication traffic which would be from Netscale IP address and from inside to the DMZ network we have the callback URL so storefront to virtual IP address on port 443. This has to be port 443. This has to be SSL. And that's it.